Are you serious? Are you serious? It is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad they're in. Now, today is the Iowa caucuses, and there's going to be a lot of uh, moving and shaking going on tonight in Iowa, and we'll find out how this all pans out. Uh, I think it won't matter in the long run who wins tonight, whether it's the Republican side or the Democrat side. I think what's more importantly, what we see over the next month up, up until Super Tuesday will probably give us a better handle. But I want to read uh, from, there's a, I received a gift in the mail called the Founder's Bible, which is really uh, got some great information in it. And I want to thank the person that sent it to me, but I don't know who that person is. All right. I don't know who the person is. So please send me an email and let me know who you are, but thank you so much for it. Now, uh, let me read quickly uh, a quote as it relates to the Bible and our nation. Uh, in the formative days of the Republic, the directing influence the Bible exercised upon the fathers of the nation is evident. This book continues to hold its unchallenged place as the most loved, the most quoted, and the most universally read and pondered of all the volumes which our libraries contain. We cannot read the history of our rise and development as a nation without reckoning with the place the Bible has occupied in shaping the advances of the Republic. I suggest a nationwide reading of the Holy Scriptures for a renewed and strengthening contact with those eternal truths and majestic principles which have inspired such measure of truth, greatness as this nation has achieved. Who quoted such powerful words comparing the foundation of this nation to the Bible? It was President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Now, also, we have a quote, and it says, America was born to exemplify the devotion to the elements of righteousness, which are derived from the revelations of the Holy Scriptures. The quote, President Woodrow Wilson. Another quote, the teachings of the Bible are so interwoven and entwined with our whole civic and social life that it would be literally, I do not mean figuratively, I mean literally impossible for us to figure to ourselves what the life would be if these teachings were removed. We would lose almost all the standards by which we now judge both public and private morals. All the standards toward which we, with more or less resolution, strive to raise ourselves. Almost every man who has by his life work added to the sum of human achievement of which the race is proud, of which our people are proud, almost every such man has based his life work largely upon the teachings of the Bible. President Teddy Roosevelt. Another quote, If the Bible is the rock on which our republic rests, it is, he says, the rock on which our republic rests. President Andrew Jackson. Another quote, of the many influences, <clears throat> of the many influences that have shaped <clears throat> the United States of America into a distinctive nation and people. None may be said to be more fundamental and enduring than the Bible. The Bible and its teachings help form the basis from the founding fathers' abiding belief in the inalienable rights of an individual, rights which they found implicit to the Bible teachings of the inherent worth and dignity of each individual. President 
Ronald Reagan. The Bible is the best gift has given to men. And the good the Savior gave to the world was communicated through this book. But for it, we could not know right from wrong. President Abraham Lincoln. And finally, it was for the love of the truth of this great book, the Bible, that our fathers abandoned their native shores for the wilderness. And by its lofty principles, they toiled and suffered till the desert blossomed and the rose bloomed. The Bible is the best of books, and I with it were in the hands of everyone. It is indispensable to the safety and faith of our institutions. A free government cannot exist without religion, and morals, and there cannot be morals without religion, nor religion without the Bible, especially should the Bible be placed in the hands of the young, it is the best school book in the world. I would that all our people were brought up under the influence of that holy book. President Zachary Taylor. We've come a long way, though, haven't we, from these, some of these founding fathers and certainly these presidential uh, icons who stood on truth, and as our nation, our republic, has lasted for over 200 years, we think we're fully there, but we're quif very swiftly, we have been abandoning the principles of the Word of God. And we have become a nation now that wants to be godless instead of one nation under God. We've become a nation that's morally bankrupt. We've turned We've done what the Bible says in the book of uh, Jeremiah. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and they've hewn themselves out cisterns or wells, broken cisterns that can hold no water. It's one thing to abandon the word, but there's always a vacuum that must fill the void. And if we replace this great book, the word of the Lord, with, we will replace it with something else. And if, it, this, if this is the truth, which I and billions of people believe, then if we replace the truth with something, we must and we will apparently replace the truth with a lie. Pray for America. Today is the day I, uh, where the folks in Iowa will go out and caucus. We'll wait for the results tonight, find out how that shakes out. And, of course, we'll continue this process. The Lord gave me a word two years ago. said that 2016, America would come to a crossroad. and would have to decide if they were going to be, if will we be, one nation under God or not. Well... We're about to find out. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're running out of time. I'll be in West Monroe, Louisiana at the West Monroe Civic Center preaching a one-day Bible prophecy conference on March the 12th. That's March the 12th. And the prophecy conference is titled, Take America Back. We can only do that through one word and through one God and through one powerful day of prayer. We'll get all our inspiration from the word of the Lord. I'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to Bible prophecy. Pray for America, but pray for the world and pray one for another. God bless.